Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. There are many people crying out now for our nations. I say nations because you could be listening to me anywhere on planet Earth, but here's the point. While the nations do need to repent, and while we do need to push out, to get out, um, and punish a lot of satanic leadership that is running things now, of that there's no doubt. And if you have a doubt about that, I, I don't know that you realize what's going on. The acceleration of the evil, the satanic Luciferian hordes that are upon us, the spiritual darkness, the wickedness that is going on, and I pray God will give us men, will give us men in the pulpits and give us men and women, boys and girls that are intent on serving the Lord Jesus Christ. That proverbial 7,000 in the days of Elijah that did not bow their knee to Baal. Now, this is this, the, the thing about the, the country, and my country certainly here in the United States, far from God, been far from God for a long time, a long time. And now we have things like the military industrial complex and worrying about uh, Israel and other things that have supplanted the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ when it, it is us ourselves in the church, myself, all of us, that need to repent if we're going to reclaim the power of God in these last days. I'm going to look real quickly at the story of Gideon in the book of Judges. I'm just going to hit this uh, quickly. And so the Midianites, Judges chapter, um, chapter 5, 6, 7, the Midianites now have the, have the Israelites that are there in the Promised Land that in, obviously didn't conquer all of the Promised Land at this time. They have them under the yoke. And so it's, it's now forbidden to be serving God. A lot of compromise. Always going to be a lot of Judases, by the way, popping out on who you thought was on your side. And they'll be siding with the Midianites. You see that now? Do you not see a lot of pastors giving up the, the standards, saying we need to be more welcoming, we need to do this and that, and let's just sign on and let's give some money to some of these NGOs that really hate your Jesus, they hate Jesus of the Bible. They're okay with the Jesus that we concoct, you know, the... Uh, happy-go-lucky Jesus that's going to just let them continue in their sins and all of this. So we have a lot of Judas, uh, Judases, and it was the same here, and you can read it in this account in Gideon, many of his countrymen, um, forbidding the worship of the true God. But here now God sends an angel and calls, calls Gideon, and I think God is calling many of you, many of you, to step it up in your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ to really get down to business. It's not about going to church more, although for some of you that would be a, a good help for some of us. I'm speaking to myself as well. But really tripling down in praying, maybe a little fasting, a whole lot of Bible reading that we might sharpen our discernment and wisdom so we can identify the enemy, so we can identify what is going on, what needs to be done in our own lives that we may truly, as Ephesians 5 talks about, be filled more, be ye filled more with the Holy Spirit, with the Holy Ghost of God, that we might have the power to see it and to defeat it through God that works in us, through the power that works in us. So here, he's been called, Gideon's been called, and in, in chapter 7 of Judges, in verse 2, Judges 7, 2, And the Lord said unto Gideon, The people that are with thee are too many for me to give the Midianites into their hands, lest Israel vaunt themselves against me, saying, By my own hand, by our own church programs, by our own denomination, by our own favorite pastors, we have saved ourselves. But it's going to be through God. And so he gets this, this group together now that's been toned down, and then God tests them out. And as they're marching, he says, bring them down to the water. And everyone that laps it up like this, of which there's going to be 300, he says, take them. But all those that put their, their lips down to the water and just suck it up, don't take them. Not that there was anything wrong with that, but God's just trying to separate and bring it down to a very small number because the Midianites are a great host. And so he gets it down to 300, and then there is this decisive battle where he surprises them and he and and the Midianites panic and turn on one another and they get the complete victory this I know what is happening now if you have any discernment and wisdom about you you can see all that is happening everything is upside down dystopian 
I'm sorry for those that have gotten used to the dark, but the acceleration, especially in the last few years, you've got to know things are upside down. Like in Isaiah's day, when the religious people would say, relax, God's in control. And essentially, they went along with the society in saying that the sweet is now bitter, and bitter can be called sweet. And good is called evil, and evil is called good. And even those that do evil, as long as they're on the right social cause of things, they're going to be excused, they're going to be pardoned. Yea, they'll even be lifted up above you. So everything has become dystopian. What is it going to take for us to make a good and noble and majestic show of our existence upon this planet? Because we have us, we have, we're on the stage of life. Many of us are in different degrees of health and financial capability and fellowship strength around us. Many of us, and I know what it's like to live with no fellowship, but regardless of where you are, what country you live in, we have a limited amount of time, redeeming the time because the days are evil, as the scripture says. We've got to reunite, we've got to unite with that set proverbial, symbolic 7,000. Okay, push aside Big Eva, official Christianity out of the way, find the 7,000, and not just build your tribe, that you and yours may survive what's coming, but that we may do battle with the Midianites in our age. And what is required for that? Not just the 7,000, not just for those that are enlightened and are zealous for God. And this is, this is the hard part for a lot, of, a lot of Christians that keep talking about, well, the nation needs to repent. Yes, they do. But the real repentance, where it starts, the biblical formula for this is in the house of God, in our own lives, in my life, in your life. Only then will we have the anointing, and it is the anointing of the Holy Ghost of God that breaks the yoke of bondage. And many of us in our churches, we may not realize it, but we're under the yoke. Everything from pornography to addictions to most importantly, buying in and having the same mentality as the matrix so that we, we are away from God, leagues away from Him, kilometers, miles away from God, and we don't realize it because we, we are adopting the mentality of this world, of the matrix, and we don't push aside the curtains and see who is doing the work on the levers. Oh, of course, I can't get into that on these channels. But I pray that you'll be given the discernment and wisdom to realize all of these things and that the repentance that needs to occur within our own hearts. Gideon, facing overwhelming odds, achieved a tremendous victory through the power of God. And thus, if you're called to be that, like in Elijah's day, that symbolic 7,000, if your heart is stirred, stirred as Jesus Christ's heart was stirred when he fashioned a whip and drove those money changers out of the temple and overturned violently their tables. If you are stirred up about what you are seeing, let me tell you, this is the biblical formula. And a lot of you know this by heart, but we need to understand it starts at the house of God. It starts between you and I. Second Chronicles 7.14 If my people, God says, if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. You see, the land, the nation, the society, it's, it's, it's vulnerable. It's absolutely taken captive by Lucifer. But if we would follow the biblical formula, this is how we get an awakening in society, revival within, our, within the church, the real church, all those, regardless of name, that have Jesus Christ, that the Holy Ghost resides within. This is the formula, my friend. Please, I want to stir you up to want to be part of that 7,000. Again, it's just a symbolic figure. To be sold out for Jesus so that your time on this stage of life will be 
not just one of maintenance and survival and no taking a stand, which is very weak when you think about it. We're not called to take a stand. We're called to move out of the trenches and to recapture lost ground in our own lives within the church, the body of Christ, that we might be spiritually equipped and then the society at large. That is God's formula. Hallelujah. Let us all seek the face of God in humility and repentance. And maybe, praise God, if enough of us do it and God hearkens, he will turn this dystopian nonsense back, back to where we can have peaceable, decent, even godly communities again. And I'll just leave that word again out. So I'm not hearkening back to any golden age. I'm not romantic about the past at all. We've always had sin. We've always had injustice and evil. But if you can't acknowledge that statistically it's at warp speed now and many things have changed to where people don't even know who they are. They don't even know their, their, their identity. Let us recognize what's happening and follow this. Second Chronicles 714. May we really meditate upon it. May we memorize it. May we recite it to ourselves. It starts within us.